The video for today is a bit of a break from my normal pattern because it's looking at a class of ship that is famous for one reason. And that reason is three out of four of them vanishing into thin air. One of which, in particular, being probably the most famous missing ship in modern history. That class was the Proteus class of Colliers, and the ship in question was USS Cyclops. I don't think that name needs further introduction. As for why I'm covering these ships, simply because Halloween happened to fall on a Tuesday this year, and this seemed on theme. That being said, some background to start. The Proteus class were Colliers. These are a vanished breed of ships, for the most part, as their role was carrying coal. And lots of it. In the days before oil overtook coal for ship propulsion, these were very necessary ships. Colliers would carry coal to and from naval bases and coaling stations. They would supply other ships, like modern oilers, but far messier. Colliers would also, from time to time, be used for other jobs. Their massive cargo hold, stuffed with other materials, like raw ore, of varying types. That's relevant in this case, as we'll see later on. In any event, three out of four of the Proteus class would end up vanishing during their service. The lone survivor, as it were, was USS Jupiter. Converted to USS Langley, she would endure longer than any of her sister ships before ultimately falling to the Japanese offensive in the East Indies. As for the other three, well, I suppose starting with Cyclops is the way to go. Launched in 1910, she was a fairly typical collier of the time, displacing 19,600 or so tons and capable of 15 knots on two vertical triple expansion engines. Her normal carrying capacity was about 8,000 tons of coal, although her theoretical maximum was more like 11,000 tons. As for her service history, well, she carried coal around and generally puttered about, doing her thing. This she did well and without complaint from 1910 until 1917. About the only excitement to be had was supporting ships during the occupation of Veracruz, Mexico, from 1914 to 1915, during the course of which she evacuated refugees to New Orleans, earning the thanks of the State Department for that particular job. When 1917 rolled around, however, things would change. Upon the entrance of the United States into the Great War, Cyclops was formally at war not just supporting an intervention into Mexico. That said, her service in the Great War was fairly minor. Cyclops spent most of it, a couple exceptions aside, sailing around the East Coast. One of those exceptions was sailing with a convoy for France in June 1917. She also sailed to Halifax that same year. The furthest afield she went after that was in January 1918. That month, Cyclops was sent down to Brazil to fuel British ships in the South Atlantic. When that was done, Cyclops was loaded up with manganese ore instead of coal. 11,000 tons of the stuff, in fact. The port authorities swear it was properly loaded, while a member of the crew who jumped ship said it was anything but properly loaded. Regardless, Cyclops left Brazil on February 22nd, 1918, and set sail for Baltimore, Maryland. It should be noted at this point that her normal maximum capacity, and that's of coal, not manganese, would have been 8,000 tons, as I said earlier. Cyclops was dangerously overloaded. Manganese ore is denser than coal, and could easily have shifted around in the hold. If one believes the report that she was improperly loaded, that would only make matters worse. Moreover, her starboard engine reportedly had a cracked cylinder and was, as a result, inoperable. Still, Cyclops limped along, eventually making a stopover in Barbados in March 1918. 
That stopover was reportedly done because the captain was concerned about the ship being overloaded. Evidently, his worries were worked out because Cyclops set sail again. When she left on March 4th, it was never to be seen again. The wild theories almost immediately began. For example, that the captain had pro-German sympathies and stacked the ship with German sympathizers, intending to hand her over to Germany. Captain George Worley, born Johann Wickman, was an illegal immigrant of German origin. His friend group was predominantly other Germans and Austrians. And he was apparently an all-around jerk and erratic captain, snapping at the smallest things. However, there's very, very little to indicate the kind of pro-German sympathies necessary to hand over a ship of this size. Moreover, German records certainly don't indicate anything of this nature. Or, for that matter, of a U-boat attack. Ignoring the more outlandish theories related to the Bermuda Triangle, like time travel or alien abduction, the most likely option is simply that Cyclops was overloaded. If the weather got bad enough, it could have capsized her or snapped her clean in half. All it would have taken was waves spread far enough apart to leave the middle of the ship unsupported. This is where that report by Conrad Nervig came in. He transferred off the ship in Brazil, and 51 years later, told of his experience. It's from him that we know of Worley's personality, or about the potential problems in the loading. Nervig believed the ore was all stowed in the amidship hold, which made the overloading problem even worse. If the ship had her middle section unsupported between waves, and all the ore was stored there, I think you can see where this is going. However, it's worth keeping in mind, Nervig would have had reasons to dislike the captain. Not to mention, no one's memory is perfect after 51 years. Nonetheless, the overloaded ship broken two theory is supported by the fate of her sister ships. Proteus, laid down in 1911 and launched in 1912, had a fairly quiet career. After her shakedown cruise, she supported the operations off Veracruz, just like Cyclops. This consisted of four runs to Mexico between November 1913 and October 1914, at which point she moved to the Pacific and made four more supply runs, this time to the Philippines. Proteus would perform this task from December 1914 through August 1917. As for her career during the Great War, that followed much the same theme. She sailed to Brazil, much like Cyclops, in September of 1917. Then she spent the summer of 1918 sailing to the British Isles or France. With the end of the war, Proteus spent six months playing coal ferry between Britain and France. That began in December 1918 and ended in 1919, at which point she was back in American waters. Proteus spent the early 1920s on fairly typical Collier missions, supporting the fleet in the Caribbean. Other than a visit to Pearl Harbor in 1920 and to Peru in 1921. Ultimately, she was decommissioned in 1924 and left to rot. At least until transferring to Canadian civilian service in 1941 in the course of which Proteus would follow in Cyclops' footsteps and vanish. The ship was lost without a trace, carrying bauxite ore, sometime after November 23, 1941. Proteus likely sank somewhere in the Caribbean around November 23rd through the 25th, although no one knows for sure. As for the third of the missing sisters, Nereus, I've been able to find very little on her career. The ship was laid down in December 1911 and commissioned in April 1913. She was then assigned to the Atlantic Fleet and did the usual carry coal around thing, primarily to support naval bases in the Caribbean. Nereus did much the same during the Great War, continuing to supply American bases. After the war, she continued in service with the Atlantic Fleet, 
although she would decommission before her sister. Narius was placed in reserve in 1922, before being sold into Canadian service in 1941, just like her sister. And, again, like her sister, she vanished in 1941. Narius was also carrying bauxite ore under Canadian ownership in the Caribbean. This time, she vanished at some point after December 10th, 1941. As you can see, all three of these ships were doing more or less the same thing carrying heavy ore that they weren't really intended for, along more or less the same general route. Not identical, but similar. One could call the class cursed, I suppose, Langley aside. I've done a video on her, so I'll simply link that in the description, instead of repeating myself in less detail. One could also point out, rightfully, that when you load ships up with heavy ore like that, well, things could go wrong. In the case of Proteus and Nereus, they were also old. They were 30-year-old colliers, and quite probably overloaded. It's entirely likely they sank in rough weather. There's one more thing to note that supports that theory. Another collier, USS Jason, was apparently in terrible condition in 1932. One of her cargo holds was rusted out, to the point that the I-beams were completely gone. Only thin and rusting plates were holding her together for 50 feet of her length. Caustic cargo had rusted her out. We can't say for sure if a similar issue afflicted Proteus and Nereus, although probably not Cyclops. However, after nearly 20 years in dock, with presumably limited maintenance, it is entirely possible. That kind of damage, plus heavy loads, plus rough weather, I think you can see how that goes. In any event, these three ships remain a mystery until and unless wreckage is found. No German records have been found from either war, indicating submarine attack. The most likely answer is, honestly, the simplest one. Overloaded ships sank in rough weather. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.